In this video, I'll be going over the new image masking functionality in the latest version of Lightburn. So let's say we've got this picture of an adorable puppy. We'd like to engrave it, but leaving out the background, we just want the puppy. Now previously, the way that you would have to handle this is to take the image, load it in some image editing software, crop it, bring it back into Lightburn, then continue on with your workflow, but no more. This is why we have image masking. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is select a tool layer. If you're not familiar with those, those are also new to the most recent versions of Lightburn. And those work just like a normal cut layer in terms of the shapes and objects that you can draw. However, they will never be output. They're merely for marking things off on your design or doing things like this image mask. So I'm gonna then go and select rectangle. I'm going to draw a box around the puppy and then select both of them. I just use control A in this case because there's only two objects right click and now as you can see there's an apply mask to image you can also go to tools and have the same option so i'm going to apply that and as you can see it brings it down to just that rectangle size now the one thing that you will note here is that the selection box has not changed it did not get any smaller and that is because this is a mask and not a crop and let me show you what that means in this case i'm going to Click off to deselect everything and then click just on the mask rectangle that I created. And if I drag this around, as you can see, it automatically updates. It's basically providing a window into that image and putting the image only where that rectangle is. I can even invert this, select just the image, move the image around, and it does the same thing. So this is much more powerful because then you can tweak it after the fact and it's completely non-destructive. For example, I can actually go and draw another shape. Let's say I want to make a frame. I know this is a terrible frame, but I want to make a frame and I want to have the dog's face at the top. Well, one thing that I'll have to do first is actually remove the mask. So we can go back here. I'm then going to select that shape and the other one and group it. So note that if you want to apply a mask, the shapes that you use have to all be grouped if there's multiple shapes and they all have to be of the same cut layer. Now these are grouped, I can select everything again, right click, apply mask to image. And now as you can see, again, it's providing that sort of fill style window into the image. And again, this is completely movable, just as you would expect. And if I go to preview, as you can see, it only engraves where I've applied that mask. Now, if I instead wanted to actually cut this out, instead of using a tool layer, you could then select those shapes, switch it to a normal cut layer, and now that I've done this, now this will actually also cut along that line if you wanted to cut it out. It just tool layers are sometimes simpler if you don't actually want to cut where your mask is. So I'm gonna switch this back. The other thing I could do here, and I'm gonna remove the mask again, is just to show you some of the complexities that you can do with this. I'm going to delete this shape entirely, add some text, and then move that over the image. I'll get his nose right on the P there. Select everything, right click, apply mask, and as you can see, it's only going to engrave where that text is. It works just like you would on a fill, but instead of a solid color fill, it's going to be basically an image fill. Now, another thing that you can do with this is if you've done this and you want to bake this in, so to speak, you know you're done, you know that it's perfectly oriented and you want to kind of clean things up, you can actually right click on the image and there's also a flatten image mask option. I can select that. And as you can see, now the selection box has shrunk to just the size of the masking area and that tool layer is gone from the cut layers. So this image is just that. We've literally removed all of the other image data other than what you wanted it to be. So that's the image masking functionality. We hope you like it. Thanks.